Yo YouTube, what's up? I'm Tim. We got KJ here from the Cash County AC Sports Report, and we got Justin from Big League Interviews, and we also have Jets quarterback Eric Ainge on with us. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on? Nothing. I'm happy to be interviewing you. All right, uh, first question, just in general, what is your thought on the NFL lockout? Um, I always, I said from the beginning that I think it'll take uh, into training camp, you know, it'll make those guys start missing practices and the season starts closing in. And, you know, because I don't think the, the owners and the players don't want to miss any games. Everyone wants to play, but with this much time right now, um, it's hard to leverage either side enough to, to give in. So I think once training camp starts and you start getting close to those preseason games, I think we'll see something happen. Yeah, I agree. All right, and uh, another question. Will there be an NFL season next year? Like, definitely, what's your opinion on that? I think there will be. You know, there's just too much money. You know, the NFL, uh, everyone likes to think that it's about the football, but to be honest, it's a business just like anything else. And there's way too much money at stake for them not to play. I mean, I know it's happened before, but they weren't making the kind of money then that they're making now with TV and uh, endorsements and just everything. So I, I think there definitely will be a season. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if the lockout ended a week or days before the first game was supposed to start. Like, I think it'll definitely affect um, this season going forward. Yeah, I could even see them missing games. Um one thing that's come up with this uh, sh strike thing potentially is adding in two more games to the regular season. Something I've been against, we had Brian McKinney of the Vikings on. He said he was against it and there was no point. What are your thoughts on the 18-game season? It's hard enough to get 16 in. I mean, look how many guys were on injured reserve last year in the NFL. I mean, it was, it was something like like 20% of the league or something like that. I, don't, I could be wrong, but I don't know, the number was like, crazy how many guys were uh, injured bad enough to where they couldn't play for the rest of the season and you want to add two more games to that after I mean guys like Austin Collie, you know Aaron Rodgers you know getting a concussion every other week and they want to add two games I just I, it doesn't make sense to me I mean it does they just want more money but you know that's that's, that's really all it is they're not concerned with our health yeah it's, it's a big money grab really I agree with you Justin what do you got Hey Eric, what's up? I'm Justin. Um, I'm from Big League Interviews. Um, from the transition from college to NFL, how did that really affect you? Um, it's tough. You know, you go, especially like my situation. I went to college and I was there for a month, and then I was the starting quarterback. So I never really had to do the whole sit on the bench. You know, watch someone that you think you're better than, and not get to play, and you know, like a lot of guys do. And so when I went to the pros, um, first of all, part of the problem was, like I'm sure you guys will ask in a minute, but I was pretty heavy into drugs and alcohol and partying and stuff like that, and so that didn't help me. And then, um, you know, not being the guy anymore, you know, you got to sit and watch, and you're the third or fourth string quarterback, you know, it can be, it can be really tough to, to have to watch that. Yeah, and Justin, just let me jump in here real quick. I didn't want to bring this up if you didn't bring it up, but about that drugs and alcohol, can you just qu quickly explain to everyone what you meant by that? Yeah, um, I released an article a little while ago on ESPN yeah, New York. I that. And, yeah, and, uh, with the, and I did another one with the AP and stuff like that. And uh, basically, <clears throat> I just uh, talked about my, my history with drugs and alcohol since I was 11 years old and how it uh, took over my life and my senior year in college I had a pretty extensive injury and I got hooked on painkillers and from there it just kind of snowballed and got worse and worse and uh, you know I've kind of been in and out of rehab for the last few years and uh, this last time I went and I almost had 10 months clean and the reason that I did all that and came went out public and all that was because I knew with my platform and as many fans as I had, especially from Tennessee and Oregon, that uh, I would be able to help some some young kids or even some adults that were struggling with the same thing with addiction because it's just so hard 
And if there was anything that I could do by sharing my, you know, experience and and offering my help if they wanted it, um, you know, I was I was all about that. And I've gotten a great response from it. You know, I, I haven't had really anybody, um, you know, be negative to me because I'm, you know, I'm trying to do the right thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a great story and it's really inspirational. Justin, what do you have as your next question? Um, just got two more questions there, Tim. Um, Eric, what was your favorite member at Tennessee? Um, probably my freshman year, uh, we beat Florida. It was the last time Tennessee had beat Florida it was 2004, which, that, I mean, that sucks. They own us right now. It's terrible. But we beat them. I was a freshman. It was the first time in a game that I had done a two-minute drill, and it was to beat Florida, you know, down two touchdowns and late in the fourth, and we ended up kicking up, you know, scoring two touchdowns and kicking a field goal with no time on the clock in the last three minutes uh, to upset Florida. And they were ranked real high and all that good stuff, and we broke the attendance record at New York Stadium, and uh, that's kind of when things kind of took off for me down there. Yeah, yeah, I remember watching that game, actually. Uh, KJ, what do you have next? Um, personally, is Rex Ryan the best coach, you believe? The best coach? Uh, you mean in the NFL? Uh, yeah. Uh, or the, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you could make an argument for it. Um, he's a, he gets a lot of credit for being a player's coach now and, you know, all that kind of media jazz that they like to hype up. But... People have forgotten to comment on what a defensive mind and genius he is. I mean, at Baltimore, you know, he wasn't just known for being a players coach. He was known for being the defensive guru in the NFL. You know, Baltimore's defense forever was by far the best. You know, and he's still that same guy. Um, and he helps out a lot. You know, he's not one of those head coaches that just sits in his office and lets and delegates everything. You know, he's involved with the defense. He's involves himself with the offense, you know, he's, he's everywhere, and so I think you could definitely make an argument for that, you know, it's hard for me to say he's the best, because I've only had two coaches, but, uh, you know, and, and there's some great coaches in the NFL, so, but, I uh, know, he's definitely one of them, for sure. All right, Justin, what's your last question? My last question for you, Eric, as a freshman, you broke Peyton Manning's rookie record for most touchdowns in a season, Peyton Manning had nine, you had 17. How, how did that how did, how did that make you feel? Oh, uh, that's fun. You know, I have, I broke, like, I don't know, like two or three of his records, I think, when I was there. And that, that's fine. You know, that's something I'll be able to, you know, carry with me for the rest of my life. And, you know, it's not like one of those things where I, you know, sit back and dwell on the glory days or, you know, how much fun I had there. You know, it's just a fun thing, you know. He's, it's tough when you go to anyone that goes to Tennessee now, if they have any kind of a good freshman year, they get compared to Peyton Manning, and that's that's just really not fair for them to do that to anybody. You could argue that he's one of the best, if not the best that's ever played the game. So it's, you know, it's kind of a tough comparison, but, you know, it was a lot of fun down there. All right, and uh, one question. Do you, bo- do you think that Mark Sanchez could be the best quarterback in the NFL? Um... I think that physically he's got all the tools. He can make all the throws. He's strong. He's tough. You know, he works hard, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think that he just needs that confidence for 16 games. You know, he plays with it for about nine or ten of them where he's so confident and he looks just amazing in, in everything he does. And then he seems to lose confidence a little bit on, with himself. And it's not anything else. He just loses confidence with himself. And, and uh, I think that when he learns to, to harness that, you know, and, and show up 16 games a year with the confidence that he should have because he is a great quarterback, that, yeah, I think, I think it's possible. Yeah, I don't think it's possible as long as Peyton and Brady are playing. You know, yeah. once they retire and you get yeah. them out of the picture, then he's got a shot. But... And Not now, as long as those two guys are still still lacing them up. Now he's got Rodgers to deal with and Phillip Rivers. Ah, last question. <laughs> In your mind, will the New York Jets, assuming there's a season, win the Super Bowl next year? I gotta say yes. All right. I it, gotta say yes. I mean, I don't. Who the hell knows? But I hope they do. <laughs> Eric Ainge, quarterback for the Jets. Thanks for joining us, man. 
No problem, guys. Thanks for having me.